Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 71 with me Craig Barton. Now when the specifications got announced for the new GCSE, uh, the 2017 GCSE, uh, at the end of last year, two of the things that made the headlines were, were two new topics that hadn't appeared on GCSE uh, before. The first of those was frequency trees and the second was Venn diagrams and this caused quite a bit of stir in the teaching community and still we don't really know exactly how these are going to be examined and the exact content that's, that's going to be involved with those but what's absolutely amazing is that the TESMAS community stepped up and there's already been a wealth of really interesting high quality resources on these two new topics so I thought it'd be useful for the next couple of weeks just just to look at some of my favorite resources surrounding those so let's take frequency trees first because when I heard this I ain't got a flipping clue what a frequency tree was um, but now, having downloaded this resource and had a little play around with it, I certainly feel much better informed. Now look at this, first thing to say is the wonderful new TES resource website has got this beautiful preview button so you can get a nice little flavour of what the resource involves before you download it. You can also in a single click download all the five files involved in one go into a zip file and then unzip them. Um, or you can just do what you used to do and just uh, download each of the ones individually, it's completely up to you. So here is Frequency Trees that has been uh, created by Alison Gilroy. Now it consists of a PowerPoint and the PowerPoint is a pretty straightforward but really well structured thing that just has examples of, of frequency trees. So if you don't know what one is, this is the place to start. Uh, basically it's a way of, of sorting and representing uh, data. So you've got 30 students were asked if they like coffee, 20 were girls, 6 were boys, blah blah blah. And you've got to represent it in a frequency tree. And it's kind of like a probability tree diagram, but it's also kind of like a two-way table. It kind of fuses those two things together. And as I say, it's a way of uh, representing and displaying data to make it fairly useful. So that's a pretty straightforward uh, frequency tree there where students just have to bang the, the relevant information in. It gets slightly more complicated as we as we go down. As, as, as you can see there, it can branch off. You can have three things coming off the branch. Uh, there can also be uh, slightly less information given and students have to use a little bit of logic there. So you get 80 students, 47 are females, so they've got to figure out how many of our boys. And then altogether, 33 studied physics, so you've got to work out how many of the girls studied physics, how many of the boys do, and so on. And as I say, those of you who've dabbled with two-way tables before will recognise this similar style where you've got to use a bit of logic to, to work back. But what I particularly like about this resource, after the students have, have kind of got to grips with the basics of frequency trees, is that you've got a differentiated set of worksheets. So we've got green, amber, red. Now, uh, just be aware here, I made this mistake. Green is actually designed to be the easiest one, not, not the kind of the, the trickiest one with this one. So here you get at the absolute basics, just getting your head around what a frequency tree is. So just a, a two on there, splitting the, the boys and girls up. Then it gets slightly more difficult, but crucially, the frequency trees have been drawn for the students. Uh, if we progress onto the amber, we get more complicated ones here where students have a bit more literacy demands there, a bit more information to figure out. Um, but it's crucially, still the frequency trees are drawn for them and they've got to fill that in, but they've got to do a little bit more thinking for themselves. And I tell you, then we get onto the reds. They're flipping hard, these red ones. So we get here, 96 members of a running club, and look at this. Now we start to combine fractions with percentages. And by the time we get to the bottom ones, it's all kicking off here. Um, Students are split by different ratios in this particular one. And then we get almost kind of like a logical, almost almost like an algebraic expression, uh, expression one there where four times as many people predicted they were pass and fail and noticed there's no frequency tree given for the students at all. So really, really challenging stuff. Now the question is, when would you use these? Well, the new GCSE will be taught to the, uh, the current year nines. They'll be the first people to sit it. So by all means, give it a try with them. Uh, one word of caution is we, we don't yet know exactly how these are going to be examined. So there's no point panicking too much about it. We don't know whether, the, for example, the, 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 the content within this resource will be too hard or, or, or too easy or, or just completely different. But there's no, nothing stopping you just chucking this into the mix for a lesson just to see how, um, how students cope with it. Because it's quite an interesting, uh, interesting topic and it'll give them a bit of an insight of, of what's coming. And it's also good to expose your staff, uh, members of your department, to something like this fairly early doors as well, I think. So there it is, Frequency Trees, brand new to the GCSE, coming in a couple of years' time. And Tes Maths gives you a, a little exclusive insight into it. I'll be back with a fresh Resource of the Week next week. Take care and bye for now.